Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are going to continue with our TBM 930 tutorial series and today we're going to get into how to enter the flight plan into the FMC. Now, disclaimer, so don't skip ahead please. Something that keeps coming up is mods and things like that that I use and yes, there are two links, possibly three, in the description that you guys are going to need. However, the third one is irrelevant. The first one is a TBM 930 performance mod. You will absolutely need to get that if you want the same performance out of the aircraft that I get when I do my tutorials. Second thing is the G3000 mod. Okay, the G3000 is the avionics suite inside the TBM 930. Working Tile has done a fantastic job increasing the functionality and features provided in the G3000 within Microsoft Flight Simulator that aren't there by default. So if you find yourself not having functionality that you're seeing on my channel, chances are either you're missing the mod or it's incorrectly installed. So real quick, I'm gonna walk you guys through what a correctly installed mod looks like, where to find these real quick, and then we'll get into the tutorial. I'm gonna make this very quick, so stay with me. All right, so let's talk about the primary one for today's course, and that's gonna be the G3000 mod. You're gonna click in the link in the description below and it's gonna take you to the working title releases page. Now this has everything that they're working on currently. You can see this is the CJ4 version 10.2. What you wanna do from this page is just scroll down until you find the first release that is shown for the G3000, which in this case should be version four. So if we scroll down, there it is, G3000 version 4.0. You can see in the highlights what the uh, release entails, some of the fixes that are put into place, et cetera, et cetera. What you wanna do is click this link. Okay, and the reason why I'm not putting this link in the description is if you watch this when there's a later release, you're gonna sort of hose yourself and get a, you know, degraded release. So we're gonna scroll down then, and you're gonna find this zip right here. Don't worry about the source code, that's for coders. You just want this one right here, okay? Then the next link will have the TBM 930 performance mod. Now here is a brief description that you guys can feel free to pause the screen, obviously, and take a look at what these performance options are. Um, but again, it's going to be the same principle. Now this, to download this, is going to be a little bit different. Now also, just recommend, he also here lists the G3000, but this may be a link to a later version, so I recommend going with the links that I have in the description. From here, you're going to go to code, and you're going to go download as zip. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and grab these for you guys real quick, just so you guys can see what the unzipped package looks like. Okay. Let that download. Let's go to our downloads folder. Drag that over here. Okay. So, if you guys, what I like to do whenever I get a mod is I open it up and make sure there's a folder inside it. As long as there's a folder inside the zip, all you need to do, extract all. It will, by default, typically go into the location it's currently in. Just hit extract. Okay, and then it opened the folder, but you can see there it is right there. There's the zip, there's the folder. Then for the working title G3000, or G3000, working title is great about structuring their stuff correctly, so typically you can always depend on there being a folder there. But again, same thing, extract, and here I'm going to uncheck that. This takes a bit longer. And boom. Alright, so now we can get rid of our zips. We don't need those anymore. Now, these folders, it's critical how they're structured. You want to make sure when you open them, like this is a problem, okay? This is what you want to see is this, okay? This is just a titled folder, but it's not the mod. So what you need to do is come in here, grab this guy, take it out. I'm going to bring up another Explorer window by simply hitting, holding shift and clicking your file explorer again, your yellow folder. Okay, from there we can get it. Find your packages folder, community, Here's all my mods, all right? Now, I'm not gonna drag these guys in, but I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So in the TBM 930, you got aircraft TBM 930, this is the mod. So you want this folder, you want the folder right before the mod, and you'll always know it. Typically, it'll always say effects, sim objects, layout.json, manifest.json, um, but that's the mod itself. And so for example, here's my mod installed in my community folder. If I open that up, there's the mod, okay? Same thing with the G3000. Okay, if we come back, working title, working title G3000, this is the mod, okay? So if we find our G3000 here, I have it titled a little differently because I wanted it at the bottom. That's not required, it's just the way I keep things in order. Okay, again, there's the mod, just like we see here. If we saw, if I clicked on this folder here inside my community package 
and I saw this, that's a problem. That's a broken mod. It's not going to work like that. Okay, so make sure you guys have them structured correctly. Anything that you open in this folder, in your community folder, should have, I mean, this is even scenery, should have the mod structure directly inside of it. Okay, all right, so that's enough of the mods. I hope that solves your guys' questions. The only other one that you guys may see, I'll put a link in the description, that people keep asking about is the cockpit livery. Yes, my cockpit looks different. It's darker. Sometimes it has beige and other colors. Okay, that's just the cockpit livery. It is not critical to this particular mod or tutorial, but again, you can see there it is. All right. And these you do want to have a Z in front of because you want them to load at the very end. Always make sure your cockpit liveries load at the end. Put a Z in front of it. If they load in front of anything else, you may lose cockpit functionality. All right? All right. Moving on. All right. Getting into today's tutorial, we're going to enter a flight plan in manually into the FMC of the TBM 930. Let me adjust my throttle here. Got some things a little off. There we go. All right. <clears throat> don't worry about any of the other controls all I did was do a auto start for this one so I could go get my drink while it started <laughs> alright so when we think flight planning we gotta think MFD multifunction display okay don't think PFD we got the two menus here we want MFD okay think of the giant map alright boom then you got flight plan here now from here it's pretty honestly black and white oh I hit something I didn't want to okay and before we get into this, I did create a, a flight plan on SimBrief already. All right, and this is the page that we're interested in on page two. This is our route. All right, now when you enter your flight plan into SimBrief, there is a TBM 900 series that you can use. Um, a little tip here, you don't need to worry about airliner. You don't need to worry about flight number. That's all up to you. Departure, arrival, obviously. TBM series, you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and see TBM 900, okay? Uh, fuel factor, if you find that SimBrief is giving you too much gas or not enough gas, plus means it's going to give you more than it normally would. The M means it's obviously going to reduce the amount of fuel, and these are in percentages. So if it normally gives you 40% too much gas, you would take this down to M40 or M30, somewhere around there. Altitude, obviously your flight level, extra fuel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like you guys, this all this stuff's pretty black and white, what you want. You don't have to mess with most of it. Um, but uh, anyway. So pretty black and white stuff. Now today we're flying out of Aspen. Okay. Now, <clears throat> two. The reason why we, as you can see here, for those of you who know what you're looking at, we have a star here but no SID. Okay. And I did that on purpose so you guys could see how both are entered essentially. The TBM 930 and the G3000, you don't really enter the airways. For example, this is an airway here, and we would just enter it as direct. Okay. At least at the current time being, at the time of making this video, I don't have a way to enter the airways into the FMC. <clears throat> so pretty much everything is going to be direct, but you can still use your stars and your SIDs. But in this case, we're going off of Aspen Airport, runway 33, and then instead of using a SID, the standard instrument departure, we're going to go direct to our first waypoint of Linz, then direct to uh, Juliet November Charlie, then direct to Pee Wee, then if we could enter it, we would jump onto the uh, Quebec 9 or 8 uh, airway, and go to Hackman, but in this case, we're just going to go direct to Hackman. And then from Hackman, that'll be our transition point onto the Angel 4 arrival coming to Los Angeles for the 2-5 left approach. Okay, so hopefully that made sense on how I read all that. Now let's see what this looks like entering it into the computer. So, add origin, pretty simple, you know. Um, what was it? Kilo Alpha Sierra Echo for Aspen. Add our destination. Kilo Lima Alpha X-Ray for KLAX. Now we're going to enter our waypoints in between. All right, so from Aspen, remember we're going direct to Lynn. So Lima, India, November, what was that? Delta Zulu. We're going to add our next waypoint, and we're just working our way across. We're just jumping across here. So next is the JNC, following it down as we see here. So boom. And we're going to go Juliet, November, Charlie. From Juliet, November, Charlie, we're going over to Pee Wee. I just like saying that one. And add in root again. And that's going to be Papa, Echo, Echo, Whiskey, Echo. Enter. And I think we have one more, yep. And that's Hackman, that's gonna be our transition point. So we can go ahead and add our root, or add waypoint. And Hotel Alpha Kilo, what was it? Mike, November. And hit enter okay and now that brings us on to the arrival okay 
Now for the arrival, there's a little bit different process. So here's what we're gonna do. We're done entering our en our en route waypoint. So we're just gonna press done here and boom. Next line is uh, KLAX, but we have that arrival to worry about. Now this process would be the same even if we had a SID. So stay with me on this. We're gonna go back to home here. We're gonna go to procedures. Okay, think of SID, star, approach. Those are your procedures. Right, procedural actions you have to take in order to correctly fly out of an airway or uh, uh, aerodrome, right? So we don't have a departure. This is where we would enter our SID if we were using, but we do have an arrival. Okay, so we're going to go with the arrival. And we're going to go, you can see Angel 4 is already selected, but if we had to change it, we would just click on it, find the one we needed, and move forward. All right, now what's our transition? Well, we know that our transition was Hackman. That was our last waypoint before the arrival. And what you can do to verify some of this is you can just Google, in this case, I'm going to Google the Angel 4 departure, right? Now, one of the best websites, if you don't have Navigraph, is FlightAware. They have pretty much everything that Navigraph has. It just requires a little bit more digging. But, you know, that's not a big deal. So we can click in here, zoom in a bit, and look, there's Hackman. So we know Hackman's our transition point and should be Circus, should be our last one, our transition point onto the approach. So this is our transition point onto the arrival, and then we have our transition point onto the approach for 2-5 left. Okay? So let's take a look at all this. So we need to change our transition, and there it is. There's Hackman, and we're going to change our runway because we're going for 2-5 left, obviously. We want to make sure we get to the right approach. And boom. And then from here, you can see everything we have. KLAX to 2-5 left, coming in off the Angel 4 arrival, using the Hackman as our transition onto the arrival. What I like to do is sort of read these in reverse, and it makes a little bit more sense. Okay? We're coming in from Hackman as our last waypoint, jumping onto the Angel 4, heading into KLX. We're going to use the 2-5 left runway to land. All right? Now we hit load. Boom. That's done. Now we need to set up the approach. This is actually getting us onto the runway, right? So we're going to set approach. And again, what was that transition point? Well, let's find out again. It was circus. This is the end of the arrival taking us to the approach. So let's see if we can find our circus. Hmm, something's wrong here. So what do we have to do? It's probably because we're looking at the wrong runway. This is where the runway comes into play. All right, so you need to make sure that you find the right runway first. And they set it up as a, as a left to right process, right? So now we can click on that and there's our circus. Now, remember we don't want to hit activate. Activate literally makes, is exactly what it sounds like. It activates the approach. We're nowhere near the approach. We're still an aspirin on the ground. So we're gonna hit load and we're just gonna hold it there. Again, don't hit the activate approach. Now what we can do from here is we can go through flight plan and we can sort of peg down some information, all right? If there's any information that we need to worry about, you can come in here if you want to be at a specific target altitude, for example, we got 7,100 feet, let's say at Pee uh, we want to, I don't know why I said it like that, that was weird. <laughs> let's say at Pee we want to be at 15,000 feet. Well, we can just type in 15,000 feet, hit enter, boom, got your target altitude programmed in. All right, and you can work your way down and uh, up based on where you want to go. All right, and then you can verify that. Now, this works a little bit more... Um, a little bit differently than what we would expect like in the A320 where you just sort of toggle your way through and you step through. All right, now, I don't know if that's functionality that hopefully we'll see later on in time, but I know that we don't see it now. Um, <clears throat> that may be a function that the uh, G3000 can do, but it's not something that's available to us here. We have our, our zoom capabilities, but that still comes in pretty handy. I'm gonna show you why. So what you can do, and let's, um, let's adjust some of this because this map is a little crazy right now. So we're going to come over here to the MFD on this one. And we're going to find our... Uh, what am I looking for? Map settings. And let's just start turning some of this craziness off. Turn these guys off. The intersections off. VORs off. Airports off. Airways off. Let's turn our airports on. You can leave those on. Okay. Just to make it a little bit cleaner for you guys to see everything. All right, makes it makes it a little bit smoother. Now, what we can do is we're going to click on the on the knob here on the bottom rotary. So wait for the finger, give it a click. Now you get this little scratch pad here, and it's your mouse is what it is. It allows you to pan. So if I take this, notice it follows my mouse. Now it's a little it's a little funky to use. Not going to lie, 
but you can cycle through and see your different waypoints. And just like you would check any other flight plan, you want to make sure that there aren't any weird backtracks, duplicate waypoints, breaks in the flight line, anything that could be like a discontinuity, all right, something that you need to adjust. All right, and then as you get into the arrival, you know, we can zoom in a bit, Let's zoom down, all right, and again, verify that your steps are, are where they need to be. Let me start, and of course, the more you zoom in, the more mouse action it requires to, to get to where you want to be. But that's a nice handy way to verify your um, your flight plan. All you have to do is click on MFD, and boom, you're back at your starting position. Okay. Um, now, in the procedures, in the departure, the, I haven't found any way to select no departure. So if you come into procedures, oops, that's not what I wanted to hit. If you come into, come on, man. I don't know why I do that. There it goes. That was really weird. It wasn't like letting me get a hold of it. You have no choice but to select something. So whenever you're flying direct from the runway to your first waypoint, you don't enter in a SID in the G3000. Okay, don't do it because it will just drive you crazy and it will force you to put something in there. And we don't have anything. That's not the way it works. All right, so we're just going to hit back, go to home here. And our flight plan is now complete. Okay, we are ready to move on with the rest of our aircraft configuration. Now, a caveat, and I really hope everyone stuck around for this part because it's sort of critical with this one. The G3000 has a bug, and it's a known bug, and it's in the in the uh, on the page where the G3000 resides. So I hope you guys read the release notes and the bug notes. You don't ever edit the approach once you've entered it into the G3000, and so a an important piece that you guys might want to um, sort of think about when you're doing your flight plan. If you are using uh, any kind of live ATC, like uh, um, VATSIM, Pilot Edge, anything like that, where your approach may change, or Pilot to ATC, even sometimes you can force it. Uh, pilot ATC, you can force um, a specific SID or star. Um, but if you're using anything that where it could be randomized, where it's truly based on current weather conditions, um, do not enter the approach. I'm going to say it again. Do not enter the approach until you get it. Okay, because you can't, if you try to edit the approach in the G3000 right now, the current bug is it will break all of your screens. Okay, you will no longer have any functionality. The aircraft will still fly, even the autopilot still works, but all of your screens stop functioning. Okay, they just freeze on whatever screen they're on. So please, 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 once again, do if you are using any kind of live ATC where your approach may not be what you think it's going to be or may change, don't enter the approach until you receive the instructions, okay? All right, guys, um, that's pretty much all I have for you for today. So as always, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Please let me know uh, what you guys think down in the comments below. Be sure to pound that like and subscribe button. It really helps me a lot. I really appreciate all the love and support you guys are continuing to provide. Um, this information is also going to be in the TBM 930 guide that I am developing as well as much, much more. Um, but I'm trying to keep, again, this module base where you guys can go to certain sections of what you're looking for. All right. As always, guys, take care, be safe, and I will see you in the next one.